Hi everyone, today I'm sharing the top 10 best books I've ever read. I've read a lot of books in my lifetime and I've always been a really avid reader. And today I'll be sharing my favorites. For series, I'll just be sharing the name of the first book, even if it's not my favorite in the series. And this will include spoiler-free discussions of my favorite books. And just as a disclaimer, this is my opinion. You are welcome to disagree with me. That's fine. These are just my personal favorite books. So number 10 is The Assassin's Apprentice by Robin Hobb. Assassin's Apprentice is an adult fantasy novel about a bastard son who trains to be a royal assassin. I read this book my sophomore year of college. I was working at the library and this book kept me company in between patrons and different tasks and I really enjoyed reading this book. Hobbes' prose isn't as dense as most other fantasy writers, and so this book was a lot easier to read compared to like Tolkien or Terry Brooks, and I found it way more accessible and easier to get into than those other fantasy books, and this really helped me stay engaged. It's one of the few books that really hooked me in college ever since I really honed in on my writing skills, I've had a hard time finding books that I like because I can always see flaws in them and so it's really hard for me to get engaged and this book really did get me engaged. It's the first book in the Farseer trilogy. It's followed by Royal Assassin and Assassin's Quest. I haven't yet read the other two books but they're on my TBR. Number nine is Shadow and Bone by Leigh Bardugo. Shadow and Bone is a YA fantasy book about an orphan girl who discovers she has a unique power that sets her up to be the savior her nation needs. I read Shadow and Bone the summer before I started college. I was overnight pet sitting and I borrowed the entire trilogy from the library to keep me company. And what really drew me about this book was a particular character called the Darkling. There's a lot of tension between him and the main character in the book. I won't say what kind of tension, but there's a lot of tension. And that really kept me engaged and interested in the story. And I read through it really quickly, the whole trilogy. Um, Shadow and Bone is the first book in the Grisha trilogy, followed by Siege and Storm and Ruin and Rising. In trilogies, I almost always like the first book the most, and this is true for the Grisha trilogy. I definitely like the first book the most. It's the best of the three. Number eight is The Hobbit by J.R.R. Tolkien. The Hobbit is a classic fantasy novel about a hobbit who goes on an adventure to help a group of dwarves reclaim the lonely mountain and the treasure within from a dragon. I first read this book right after I read Harry Potter. I don't remember which read it was, though. So it was either fourth grade or sixth grade. I had just watched The Fellowship of the Ring with my uncle, and that's what got me interested in uh, Tolkien's work. And so I started reading The Hobbit when I was young, and then I reread it my last semester of college, which was just this past fall. And by reread, what I mean is I listened to this really awesome theatrical audiobook of it while I was at work. My job was really tedious. I sorted rocks and I enjoyed going to work because I got to listen to The Hobbit, which was really fun. Tolkien's writing style really makes his stories nice to listen to. I think it's way more engaging to listen to than to actually read. And so the experience of listening to The Hobbit was really fun. Um, Tolkien's a master storyteller, and this book is my favorite one of his. I'll be sharing more in-depth thoughts about The Hobbit in future posts, and that will be coming up next week, so stay tuned. Number seven is Beyonders, A World Without Heroes by Brandon Mole. You will quickly learn that I love Brandon Mole. I have loved everything I've ever read by him, and I practically worship his books. Beyonders is the second series that I read that was written by Brandon Mull, and it is a YA fantasy novel about a young teenage boy who was swallowed by a hippo and ends up in a different world where he must face an evil emperor in order to find his way home again. I first read this book in middle school, I can't remember if it was 6th or 7th grade, and I remember going to the launch party for the third book in Salt Lake City. My dad let me skip class so I could go and meet Brandon Mole. And I reread this trilogy in May of 2020 when I was in my third year of college. And 
I still love this book. Mole's world building is amazing. Larian is such a unique setting that I really can't get enough of it. The rule I mentioned about trilogies does not apply to this one. Um, with Brandon Mole, I'm always different. I like the last book the most, and that was the case with this trilogy. I like the third book, Chasing the Prophecy, more than the first book. I'll be doing a more in-depth look at this trilogy later this year, so stay tuned if you want to know more. Number six is The Angel's Game by Carlos Ruiz Stefan. The Angel's Game is an adult book that fits into several genres, mainly magical realism, mystery, and thriller. The book follows a writer who has mysterious encounters with an equally mysterious man, and there's a romantic subplot. I was first introduced to Stefan by his book The Shadow of the Wind. I read that book, The Prisoner of Heaven, and The Angel's Game in high school, all for book report projects. They all take place in the same world, the world of the Cemetery of Forgotten Books, um, but The Angel's Game can be read by itself, even though it's a prequel to The Shadow of the Wind. Um, this book is my favorite of the three, and it really just kept me turning pages as quickly as I could. I just go through these books so quickly. And Zafon's work is really dark, so it kind of feeds the darkness in my soul, which is probably why I like them so much. Number five is The Book Thief by Marcus Zusak, and it's a YA historical fiction novel. It's really interesting because it's in Death's POV, and it follows the story of a young girl growing up in Nazi-era Germany. This is another high school book report read, and I'm pretty sure I read it in three days, um, which is pretty quick for a big book. It's another one of those gripping books that I just couldn't put down. I honestly don't remember much about the plot because it was quite a while ago when I read it, but I remember raving about this book so much after reading it. It was just one of those really engaging reads that I love so much. Number four is Fable Haven by Brandon Mole. I'm sure you're not surprised that's on here. This is the first book series that I read by Brandon Mole. It's a middle grade fantasy series about a brother and sister who find out their grandparents run a preserve for magical creatures. And this is one of my absolute favorite series of all time. I first read it in fifth grade and I've reread it five or six times since then. And I still love this book. It captures my attention every time. I love the plot, the world building, the setting, the characters, all of it. Mole's plot twists in particular are the best. There are so many amazing plot twists in this series. I've never been able to predict Mole's plot twists, which is saying something because I'm one of those people who can predict plot twists before they're foreshadowed and sometimes before I even read the book. And Moles get me every time. My favorite book in the series is, again, the last one, which is Keys to the Demon Prison, but I really like the third and fourth books as well. Number three is The Girl of Fire and Thorns by Ray Carson, and this is a YA fantasy about a princess who has a godstone embedded in her navel. When she enters an arranged marriage with the king, she finds herself face to face with a terrible war. This is another one of those books that I just couldn't put down. I can't remember if I first read it in middle school or high school. I'm thinking middle school, and I know I reread it in high school. I've actually read it three times. Um, it's the first book in a trilogy, and it does follow my trilogy role. I love the first book. I'll be taking a more in-depth look at this trilogy later in the year, so stay tuned for that. Number two is Fangirl by Rainbow Roll. It's a YA contemporary romance about a young woman who is in her freshman year of college and navigating the challenges that accompany it. I read Fangirl the summer before I started college, which was really appropriate, especially because the main character is an English major, and at the time I was an English major, ended up switching majors, but at the time it was very appropriate for me. And I reread it a few weeks after I graduated college, which was just last month. And the one thing I love about this book so much is that the romance is really healthy and that's unlike most YA romances and it's just such a sweet romance. I'm not a big one for romance unless it's a subplot but I really love this book. A lot of people argue that one of the characters is the best book boyfriend ever and I would have to agree. Number one is The Count of Monte Cristo by Alexandre Dumas. 
The Count of Monte Cristo is an adult adventure novel that focuses on a man's revenge after he is wrongfully imprisoned on his wedding day. I wasn't expecting a book report read to be my favorite book ever, especially this 1,200-page monster, but I love this book. I read it in a week, right after I read The Book Thief, and there was like a 100-page section that was slow. I think it was like page 300 to 400, but other than that, this book drew me in and did not let me go. There's so much tension as Edmond Dante seeks his revenge on the people who wronged him and tries to get his fiance back. Words cannot express how good this book is. I need to reread it, like right now. And I'm wondering why I left it at my parents' house, because I really need to reread it. So there you have it. These are my top 10 favorite books of all time. Have you read any of these? Are any of these your favorite? Do you hate any of them? I'd love to hear your thoughts in the comments. Stay tuned for my next post on Thursday, which will be the 10 worst books I've ever read. If you enjoyed this video, give it a thumbs up and hit the subscribe button and the bell to get notifications. I hope everyone has an excellent day. Bye!